plus the sample variance for the second group divided by the sample size of the second group. That's your test statistic associated with the hypothesis test comparing two means with independent sample. Comparing two proportions. It's the first sample proportion minus the second sample proportion. Okay. Divided by the square root of, I'm going to put this squiggle p, 1 minus squiggle p, we'll talk about what that is, over the first sample size plus squiggle p, 1 minus squiggle p over the second sample size. It's the second test statistic value. So we're going to have to talk about what that squiggle p is. In the compare squiggle p is defined to be what's known as the pooled proportion. Okay, this is the pooled proportion. The pooled proportion is just that. If you pool your resources, you add them together. Meaning, for sample size, add the first sample size with the second sample size. Add the first number of successes with the second number of successes. What you get is something known as the pooled proportion. Pooled meaning to add. So you're adding your resources here. Okay. So this is the test statistic associated with comparing two means and two proportions. Okay. And also, I have to modify over here the decision rule, but the only thing I'm going to modify now is that before, you had a parameter compared to a value. You're comparing a parameter to a value. Now you're comparing two parameters. So this is what your setup is going to look like. Parameter 1 versus, this is going to be the difference now, parameter 2. Parameter 1 not equal to parameter 2. Parameter 1 it's not compared to a value anymore. You're comparing two parameters. Parameter 1 on the left. On the right, parameter 2. Parameter 2. Okay. The same thing for the last situation. Parameter 1 versus parameter 2. Parameter 1 versus parameter 2. So you're comparing two parameters now, and you're not comparing um, a parameter to a value. So what we have here then is everything that we need to, compute, to uh, perform hypothesis tests with two independent samples. Okay, so very often men and women are compared. Um, you know, you can even compare certain things associated with illnesses. You have two groups. Maybe you want to test the medication. You give the medication to one group. You see what proportion get well, and you give another group a placebo and see what proportion get well there. And you can perform a hypothesis test regarding even medications or immunization. So this is used in, in those sort of settings. We very often like to compare groups. So example, let's go for let's look for an example here. Do the example with a mean here. Um, Let's see, you think that the age of male students versus female students, is there a difference in ages? Are the male students older than the female students, or is it the female students are older than the male students? What's your hypothesis? You think the females are older in general in colleges and universities than the males? 
Well, let's say this, that that the age of females, or the age of female students, is at least the age of male students. Sample information reveal the following. Min. You have a sample size of, let's say, 85 with a sample mean equal to, oh, let's say, 22.4 and a standard deviation of 3.1. And we're going to compare that to women. And the sample from the women's population, we've asked 50 women how old they were. With the sample mean, we got maybe, oh, 24.2 with a standard deviation of 5.1. OK, what we're going to do is we're going to test the claim. Now, again, what other piece of information do you need to have here? They're going to need to tell you what? Level of significance. So you're going to say, use the 10% level of significance to test this claim. Okay, so they have to give you that information because without it, you can't do the problem. You need a critical value to compare your test statistic to. So let's see. Your null hypothesis and your alternate hypothesis. So far, does anybody have any questions on what we did? So the... What's the statement here? What is at least? OK, now let's stop and think about this. They didn't indicate a parameter. So what parameter are they talking about? If they say that the age of female students, what do they mean? What does that imply? If you asked 85 female students what's their age, couldn't they all possibly be different? So how do they get a summary of that? What is this? That's a mean, right? So you're summarizing, you're really thinking this, that the mean age of who? Female students is at least, what does that mean? Greater than or equal to the mean age of who? Male students. Is that a null or is that an alternate? Why is it a null again? Has inequality. So mu of female is greater than or equal to mu of male. What's the opposite of that statement? Mu of female is less than mu of male. So one of these statements are going to be supported by the sample. And they're opposites. So even if you look at your decision rule or you look at your setup, it's setup number two, in which the decision rule is a what kind of test? Left tail, because you're looking at the alternate hypothesis. So this is a left tail test. What's in the middle here? Do not reject the null and then a reject the null. So here, notice that you have, what kind of samples do you have? Are these large? 
we'll talk about a small situation here, but these are large, meaning what's the critical value? How do you find the critical value? This is a Z distribution. Now alpha is 10%, so that 10% of the ballast shaded here implies 40% is not shaded here. Looking, working backwards on your Z table, getting as close as you can to the 40%, what does it give you as a Z value? Well, that's the negative 1.28. That's the Z value associated with this decision rule. Okay, you're getting as close as you can to the 40. Yes, it's 0.3997, but the Z value is negative 1.28. Okay, so now, what's left for us to do? I'm going to use this. Which one? I'm going to use this one. We're not going to use a proportion. We're going to use the what? A mean, because why? You're comparing means. You're comparing means. So, and notice, if you're comparing means, your sample information is going to have mean information. Because the nature of the data is going to be data values, not counting successes. So now, write down your formula. The test statistic is the first sample mean minus the second sample mean divided by the square root of the first variance divided by the sample size of the first group plus the second variance divided by the sample size of the second group. Notice this. You're going to have to be very careful. This is what can happen. What is the first group, men or women? What do you think the first group should be? Look at this. What's parameter? Parameter 1 is always on the left. Parameter 2 is always on the right. Parameter 1 is on the left. Parameter 2 is on the right. Parameter 1 is on the left. Parameter so what you're saying is this. Whatever you see here on the left is your what? That's your first parameter, first population. Whatever you see on the right is your what? Is your second. So that when you use this formula, you have to be consistent with those groups. So that the mean or the sample mean of the first group is really the sample mean of who? The women, the female. So that's going to be 24 point what? 2 minus, what's the second group, the what? Min, 22.4. So this is the, although you see it first, it's the second population. Although you see the second, it's the first. You're just being consistent with what you have here. And sometimes that happens when they give you the information. OK? So what is the, since this is the first, what's, this is 5.1. So I have to take 5.1 and square it. What's that sample size? 50. The second is 3.1. 3.1 squared. And what's the sample size here? 85. So in your calculator, what you indicate is that the test statistic is going to be 24.2 minus 22.4 divided by the square root of 5.1 squared over 50 plus 3.1 squared over 85. Okay. So what I have to do now is demonstrate to you what you guys need to do to enter in those calculators so that you get the right answer. What you want to do is put parentheses again over that numerator. The operation is subtraction. Now, under the radical, this is what you're going to do because you have to communicate to the calculator, first of all, that this mass that you see is all under the radical. So how you do that is to put these outside parentheses. But then it's very difficult for you to put everything you see here in terms of all its operations. So what you're going to do is this. 